Moscow has been accused of stealing over 19,000 Ukrainian children from war-torn areas and illegally deporting them to Russia. How many of these kids are from Ukraine? Six people. The people running this camp are saying that this is not about brainwashing kids. But at the same time, you know, there is a Russification going on here. This is you wearing a military uniform with a Russian Z on it. There are reasonable grounds to believe that you bear criminal responsibility. Are you a war criminal? <laughs> We're here in the town of Kupiansk in Ukraine, which was occupied early on by the Russians, since been taken back by the Ukrainians. And we're inside a boarding school, which you can see has just been bombed to pieces. Back in September, when the school year started, over a dozen Ukrainian kids were taken from here to Russian-held territory. For many parents, that was the last time they saw them over eight months ago. Mykola Sizanov was here on September 8th when at 1.35 p.m. around a dozen armed Russian soldiers turned up and started herding the children onto buses. They were all in Balaklava, one of them was all in the glass. All, nothing else was not visible. In the future, I don't know, 50 of them took all of them. It was a credit card. This is not an isolated incident. CCTV from an orphanage in occupied southern Ukraine, 400 miles away, shows chilling footage of Russian soldiers searching the building for Ukrainian children. Moscow has been accused of stealing over 19,000 Ukrainian children from war-torn areas like these and illegally deporting them to Russia. It's part of what could be one of the most egregious war crimes committed to date. President Vladimir Putin and his children's commissioner, Maria lvova Belova are accused of attempting to ethnically cleanse a generation of young Ukrainians. So these are the school records up here. So you've got kids from ninth grade all the way through to first grade. And this boy, Nikita, who's 12 years old, born 2011, and his mum, Oksana, is still looking for him. And has so far been unable to contact him. Oksana Stetsenko hasn't seen or spoken to her 12-year-old son, Nikita, since he was taken away eight long months ago. Are you two very close? Yes, of course. We met do you remember when you said goodbye to him? Do you remember the last time you saw him? Russian soldiers took Nikita and 12 other children from Kupiansk to a boarding school deep in Russian-controlled territory. We found the school's social media page, which is full of hyper-patriotic Russian content. We showed it to Oksana in the hopes she'd spot her son among the thousands of photos posted by the school's administration. What? Да, вот на ухе Сережка, да, это он. Как всегда обиженный. Ой, ну я ты сонечко. Seems like a lot of Russian flags. Россия. Гады. Now Oksana must make the most terrifying journey of her life in an attempt to get her son back. How are you feeling about this journey coming up? Боюсь, страшно. Очень боюсь. Ну одно только меня держит в руках, что Никиту увижу. Ну 
надеюсь, что увижу. You're so brave going all that way. Вы бы не поехали за своим сыном. Поехали бы. Nikita is being held in Peravalsk, in Russian-occupied territory. To get him back, Oksana must travel across Ukraine, through Poland and Belarus, into Russia, and eventually to Peravalsk. With the help of the charity Save Ukraine, over a hundred mothers, sisters and grandmothers have made this perilous journey already, retrieving their own children. But the Russian public is presented a very different story. On Russian state media, smiling, joyful Ukrainian children are seen thanking Russian soldiers for saving their lives. Спасибо дяде Юрий за то, что он меня, мою сестру и сотни тысяч детей спас с Мариуполя. 24 ребенка из Донбасса, которые остались без родителей, обрели новых мам и пап. And Pro Kremlin TV is full of stories about Ukrainian children being taken in by kind-hearted Russian foster families. Like these five siblings from Russian-occupied Donetsk, who arrived in Russia last fall. We are here in Russia right now. We were really surprised to receive approval for our request to come and film here and to meet some of these Ukrainian children and see for ourselves what's going on. We gained unprecedented access to a government-approved foster family to figure out what's happening to these kids after they're illegally deported to Russia. How many of these kids are from Ukraine? Six people. Wow. Veda Lividanova is the foster parent who took them in and an aspiring actress. She has two dozen kids in her care and receives a thousand dollars a month for each. She's also receiving government contributions to build her new home. Can you introduce me to everyone? Natasha, Natasha, And you? I saw the video of you coming here on the train. You must have been very brave to come all that way. Do you miss anything from back home? How do you see the conflict at the moment between Ukraine and Russia impacting children's lives right now? Когда приехали, то детей кричали ночами и писались. У меня в постели одномоментно образовалось пять малышей. Some of these kids must have been through very traumatic experiences. Do they not belong in Ukraine? Is it not fair to say that these kids have essentially been stolen from a country? Это, наверное, тот редкий случай, когда я не буду занимать ничего сторону, потому что действуя именно в интересах детей, я промолчу и не буду отвечать на этот вопрос. The Leva Danova claims to be acting in their best interests. The Ukrainian children in her care have been illegally deported. Thousands more children from occupied areas of Ukraine are being held in repurposed summer camps in Russia, like the ones found in these satellite images. They stretch from Russian-occupied Crimea all the way to Far Eastern Siberia. According to a report by Yale University, many children have been forced to spend months in these facilities without their parents' consent. This is the first time Western media has been allowed inside one of these camps, where Russia says they're simply providing a few weeks' respite for kids from war-torn areas. Сейчас дети на репетиции. У них у них завтра концерт. On the face of it, the kids here seemed to be having a good time. But our guides, including Alexei Petrov, who's under international sanctions, were determined we only saw what they wanted us to see. Очередь становится, чтобы попасть в наш лагерь. Вот мы спрашивали, какой из ней вот самый 
запоминающийся самый счастливый. Тот день, когда они получили русский, российский паспорт. So how many of these kids here have received Russian passports recently? Достаточное количество. It is hard to believe that all these kids are completely happy to become Russian and to, you know, come to Russia when, you know, the reality on the ground is this extremely brutal conflict that they've been experiencing themselves. And so is the hope that these kids want to stay in Russia? Да, конечно. It's interesting because, you know, the people running this camp are saying that this is not about brainwashing kids at all, but it's about rehabilitating them and helping them. At the same time, you know, there is a Russification going on here, and you can see that with you know, kids talking very enthusiastically about Russia. Clearly, we're only allowed to speak to certain people. We are getting very heavily monitored. Isabel. We were taken to the gym, where 17-year-old kids from areas that were occupied by Russia last year were waiting to talk with us. These kids had been pre-approved by camp managers. Camp staff were constantly present, and a government minder filmed our entire conversation. It's unclear how freely they were speaking. Around the world, there's, you know, camps like this are very contentious and there's a lot of accusations that the Russians have been stealing Ukrainian children. Is there anything you've learned since being here about Russia or Russian people? На самом деле, ходило очень много стереотипов, что русские люди очень плохие у нас. А, но когда я сюда приехала, поняла, что на самом деле они такие же люди, как и мы. Do you consider yourself Ukrainian or Russian? А можно я буду отвечать? Okay, okay, I understand. Mariupol was where you were born, right? I mean, did seeing it get raised to the ground, did that make you think differently about Ukraine or about Russia? So I can't ask anything about the conflict? Mm, we need to change the roof or just finish. Okay. Um, okay, well, I guess. Thank you very much for talking with us. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. Clearly, any questioning of Moscow's version of events was off-limits. The woman determining the fate of Ukrainian children in Russia is Maria Lvova-Belova, Putin's trusted official in charge of children's rights. She's slammed as a child snatcher by the international community and is accused of war crimes alongside President Vladimir Putin Last year, she lobbied Putin for a change in the Russian law, making it easier for Ukrainian children to be given Russian passports. This has complicated the process for Ukrainian family members to get their kids back. This was the first time Lvova Belova would sit down with a Western journalist. Are these children being used as propaganda tools by the Russian state? You are talking meetings and meetings. Yes. Мы благодарили бойцов за спасение, за то, что помогли, за то, что не оставили, за то, что вытащили из-под бомбежек. А что слова благодарности это разве пропаганда? Это обычные человеческие искренние эмоции. Mm -hmm. Can you understand, you know, the argument that getting these kids Russian citizenship could be seen as a form of wiping out their identity and as a form of ethnic cleansing? Никакого насильственного, например, насильственной выдачи гражданства, как часто Украина транслирует, у нас не было. А какое количество людей у нас имеет двойное, тройное гражданство в мире? Давайте об этом поговорим с вами. Когда э, я уверена, что в вашем окружении есть много людей, у которых два гражданства. Есть? Well, I, I would say it's a yeah, different yes situation. Yes, yes. <laughs> I would say it's a slightly different situation when it comes to Russia and Ukraine, given that there's a very active conflict going on right now. Нет, подождите, а как? Как? Ну, это не важно. Не про какое стирание идентичности мы с вами не можем говорить, потому что Россия многонациональная страна. You are accused of some very serious war crimes. There are reasonable grounds to believe that you bear criminal responsibility for illegally deporting and transferring children from Ukraine to Russia. Are you a war criminal? 
<laughs> Точно смешно. А, я мать. Я тебе все сказано. Какой я военный преступник? О чем вы говорите? А, Во-первых, юрисдикцию Международного уголовного суда Россия не признает. Если мы с вами вспомним Женевскую конвенцию, то а, мы по Женевской конвенции можем эвакуировать людей, детей из зон, где а, для их жизни и здоровья представляется опасность. But the, the convention also goes on to say that if they need to be evacuated for safety reasons, they, they should be held in a third party country. Why wasn't that done? Значит, все дети приехали с законными представителями. Никого не было разлученных, разделенных. У всех были законные представители. Мамы, папы, бабушки, дедушки, опекуны, директора учреждений. Не было разделенных. Это было абсолютно добровольно. This is not true. We know for a fact that Nikita and the other children who were taken from the school in Kukansk were unaccompanied when they were taken without their parents' consent. Подожди. Ты что такая? Цветочкой. Выкинуть. Нет? Да. Нет? Да. Тёма! Only kids who are back in Ukraine can really speak freely about their experience of being illegally deported. Artyom is friends with Oksana's son, Nikita. They were together when Russian soldiers packed them onto buses and took them away from their school. Чай и каву. His mum, Natalia, got him back in April. It must have felt like such a relief after all those months. How did you feel while you were there? We actually visited a, camp, a children's camp in Russia and the government officials who were showing us around you know, showed us kids that were singing and dancing and kids who were seeming to have a very good time. That doesn't sound like that was your experience. Нет, не похоже на то, бо там вообще по-другому. На полу, на бетоні, без подушок. Кормили тушонка, перловка і чай там якийсь, чи похлёбка якась. Начали заставлять вставати під російський гімн, співати гімн. This is Artyom? Yeah. Oh, wow. So this is you wearing a military uniform with a Russian Z on it. And what was it you were studying here when you were wearing this, Artyom? No, як правильно, ну, як форму правильно, як правильно бронежилет одівати, ну, це все. Військова підготовка. Fearing that her son would be brainwashed into helping with Russia's military effort, Oksana finally made it to where Nikita was being held. Maria Lavova Belova shared the story on her Telegram channel. In a Russian news report about how Moscow is helping Ukrainian mothers reunite with their children, giving the impression that they're facilitating the process rather than systematically organizing their separation. Ну, а в Москве там трошки задержали меня. Там все, кто с украинским паспортом отдельно. И очень долго. Поэтому меня долго так задержали. Out of the many thousands of Ukrainian children who have been deported, only 373 have been returned home so far. The rest remain in Russia, separated from their families, not knowing if they'll be taken to Russian foster families or recruited into the machine of war. <laughs> Ну так назад верни их, блин, что вы их там держите, блин? Скоты, блин. 